In this video, we're going to talk about treat delivery. We're gonna talk about where to deliver the treat, as well as talking about the best delivery methods for getting that treat to your dog successfully. First, let's talk about treat placement. Treat placement matters, so where you're delivering food to your dog matters. If you hold your food up really high and your dog tries to jump for it, you're going to encourage jumping. So when we deliver the treat, we want to think about the best placement for it. Generally, the best placement for treat delivery is in position. So for instance, if I'm treating for the sit, I'm going to do a fast delivery right to the dog's face so they don't get up to get the food. If I'm delivering for a down, I actually deliver between the paws to encourage, right on the floor, to encourage the dog to stay in the down. So I'm gonna do a quick delivery to the floor between the paws for the dog. In most positional training, besides the down where you really wanna encourage them to not reach up for the food, I'm gonna to treat to the face. So that means if I'm teaching a sit pretty or a beg, I'm gonna treat them while they're in that sit pretty or beg. If I'm gonna teach the sit, I'm gonna treat them in the sit. I wanna kind of encourage the position that I'm asking them to hold for that treat. There will be some cases where throwing the treat is the type of delivery you want to use. Say uh, you're shaping a new behavior and you want to throw the treat away from, say, your platform that you're training on to encourage the dog to then run back to the platform to get a click and another reward. So you're trying to create this behavior loop. Then you might want to toss your treat. So we want to also toss our treats effectively. If you're throwing a treat, I will typically use a get it cue to let them know that they can go run after the food. Or if I am say releasing them and I'm gonna throw the treat for a release, I'm gonna say free and then toss the treat so that they know that treat is fair game and they should chase after it. So let's talk about the physical delivery of the treat, how we're actually delivering that treat to the dog's mouth. I use this hand cupped type of treat delivery that I kind of developed over years of working with mouthy German shepherds and puppies to keep my hands from getting bitten. Everyone's seen uh, someone with a new puppy, their hands are just destroyed from the dog trying to take treats from them with their entire mouth. So I wanna make sure my fingers are out of the way and this almost looks like a modified way you would feed a horse with that flat palm. I'm using a cupped position to teach, uh, to teach them to be gentle and almost lick the treat out of my hand. To deliver the treat, I first make sure that I have a treat pouch and that I'm not holding a bunch of treats in my hand. It will increase my dexterity to be able to handle one treat at a time instead of a bunch. It also prevents the dog from thinking that they should only do work if there's food in your hand. So when I deliver the treat, I will take the one treat at a time and I will roll it between my thumb and my first finger, low down on that first finger, more towards the center of the thumb. I will also create a cup a slight cup in my hand that will prevent the dog from nabbing my fingers when they go to take the treat. I'll feed the treat to the dog in this cupped hand position and as soon as my hand goes to their mouth, I release the treat into their mouth. The holding between the thumb and, the four, and that first finger keeps the treat in place and then the delivery is either going to be overhand, so uh, I'm going to be, say my dog is on my left hand side and we're doing heel work, I'm going to just put my hand straight down, the palm facing my dog, and they're going to go ahead and, and release that treat right into their mouth. Or if it's going to be a delivery to the face, my palm will be slightly up, deliver it right to the dog's mouth. This prevents any biting of the hand and almost mimics how you would feed a horse to a carrot, but in a vertical position. If you have a really mouthy puppy and you also have children that are training with your dog, it's really easy for the children to become fearful of the dog if the dog gets too mouthy with them when they deliver treats. What they end up doing is pulling that hand away, which encourages chasing from the dog, which we want to try to prevent. So in that case, I'll use a different strategy for treat delivery. These methods of delivery also works for people who have dexterity issues, uh, might have trouble bending down to treat the dog, or have thin skin where a puncture to the hand would be a real problem for them, or a scrape to the hand would be a problem for them. We can use these other types of delivery methods. The first of the alternative methods for treat delivery would be a food robot or a pet tutor or manners minder. And this is a mechanical system that's going to have food loaded into it and you can remotely trigger it, usually via a clicker or an app on your phone, so that you're able to trigger 
the delivery of food from a distance or not directly from your hand. And these work really well, uh, not only just for people who have dexterity issues or for children, but they also work really well in certain training scenarios like teaching a uh, stay at the door and being able to treat the dog right on their place or teaching uh, drop on recall, those type of things. The next treat delivery method would be from some type of squeeze tube uh, where you can deliver things like peanut butter or a puree of some type of meat or that kind of thing um, via a squeeze tube where you're just squeezing a bit out for your dog so your hands aren't involved. And the final lowest tech but most often used delivery method when I have I need to make this change during a lesson is a wooden spoon and some peanut butter or cream cheese. So I will take a glop of peanut butter, put it on the wooden spoon, and then I can deliver it down to the dog and then remove the wooden spoon. Now obviously this is a big cue to the dog that food is coming, but it works really nicely for children or for really small dogs. Say you're teaching loose leash walking and it's a real pain to bend down to treat the dog every time. You can use your wooden spoon with some peanut butter, give them a lick, and then bring it right back up to your chest so that they can, are no longer have access to that reward. So those are a couple options if you can't do the physical hand treat delivery. So just to recap, we wanna think about quick food delivery to the dog in the position that they're in, or if we're going to throw the food, we're going to release them to that thrown food so that they know that that's theirs to run after and get. We also want to use one treat at a time, utilizing a treat pouch to store the rest of our treats or a bowl or some other thing off your body so that you don't have a million treats in your hand. You're gonna take that one treat, you're gonna roll it between your thumb and your first finger, the lowest part of your first finger and create almost like a little cup for your dog. You're gonna place that little cup right on the dog's nose and as soon as their nose touches it, you're gonna open your thumb and deliver that treat right in your mouth, causing them not to nip or bite at your hand. We can also use other types of treat delivery, such as peanut butter on a wooden spoon or a food roadmap. Delivering treats effectively is an actual skill, so you're gonna to wanna to practice with your dog to make sure that you get it down and get your timing down and get your delivery down. Lots and lots of practice, lots and lots of training. All right guys, if you like this video, definitely give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe button below with the little bell. When you hit that bell, you'll be notified anytime we come out with a new training video for you to watch. Have a great day guys, happy training.